everyone. Morning, Nice. Um, it's great to be back uh, in the south of France. So I'm delighted to say we have with us this morning uh, Tarek Amin. Tarek is CTO of Rakuten, uh, and Andrew Feinberg, President and CEO of Netcracker, which is partnering with Rakuten for their 5G rollout. So, uh, or 4G rollout, I should say. So let's welcome Andrew and Tarek on stage. <laughs> Come and join me on our, on our, on our, lovely, uh, our lovely white bench. So, Andrew, before we move on to the Rakuten story, um, I think it would be worthwhile just hearing about some of the transformation projects you've been involved in around the world. And I think, I think as a global supplier, partner of the, of the operators, you have a pretty good visibility of uh, what are the key issues um, around transformation. So maybe you could just uh, present a few slides for us on some of your learnings and experiences. Sure. Andrew, over to you. Sure. Can I stand up? You can stand up. You can stand up. You can stand up. Yeah, yeah. You're very welcome to stand up. Um, so this is, let's talk about transformation. Um, TM Forum came up with a statistic. 87% of all of us here have started some form of digital transformation. Now, this year marks, I believe, the 20th anniversary of Netcracker TMF collaboration that's been very, very successful over the years. I think it was 20 years ago that I first went for TMF Dallas trade show, and then we were talking about transformation. So now for 20 years that I can remember, we've been talking about transformation. Guess what? Guess what? It's actually happening. It is taking place now. It is happening. It's real. We may be a little slow. It took us 20 years to get here, but now 87% of our customers, of all of you, are actually engaged in transformation. Um, to Mark, to answer your question, we're seeing various types of transformations. Um, IT transformations, to have systems evolve to support next generation technologies, next generation business models. Of course, network transformations. We talked a lot about virtualization. We talked a lot about software-defined networks. And finally, last but furthest from the least, is, of course, the ultimate transformation of the digital experience, the way we interact with our customers. All three of those components have to eventually come together. They don't need to be planned. Well, they don't need to be deployed together. They need to be thought through, and thought through very, very carefully in concert. And I think as we look at these transformations around the globe, and we certainly have the benefit of working with dozens and dozens of active transformations in every one of those three categories, um, we look across at them and we think, what is the common denominator? What can we learn? What can we bring to the next transformational activity that we have around the world to make life easier for our customers. And if I were to put it in three broad categories, the one and the first one that comes as no surprise probably to anybody, this is hard. This is just really, really hard. Uh, there is a tremendous skill shortage. We're learning a lot of new stuff um, in every aspect. Business models, we're dealing with completely new business models, technology. Um, both on the, on the software and systems standpoint, side as well as the network side. Um, and of course, different deployment, different delivery models. There's just so much new. We live largely in a legacy world. How do you bring that and, uh, into our existing operations and make this happen? There are very few people who actually know how to do this, so our first lesson is always focus on people. At the end of the day, that is the most critical element of success of any of these strategic activities. Um, the second part is technology versus reality. There's a lot of buzzwords, a lot of buzzwords. What do they really mean, and what do we really need? Cloud. That's probably my favorite one of the day. But what do we really put in the cloud, and why? 
virtualization. What do we virtualize? What do we need to virtualize and why? Um, security. There's so many elements that are just, just so poorly defined still, focusing on separating the noise and truly investing in areas that bring you competitive advantage with a visible return of an, an investment is key. And that's also hard. And then finally, of course, culture. We've talked about this for many, many years. It is becoming easier. Good news, again, 20 years, it's becoming a little easier. Um, but it's still a problem. It's still a big problem. How do you transform organizationally? That's key. It has to happen. A lot of companies bring change agents. We're seeing a lot of, I assume a lot of you came from outside of this industry. A lot of change agents come into this industry uh, and a lot of them kind of hit the same fence and they are not able to drive to the results that they really would normally get should, they, should all of us collaborate with them better, particularly the, the legacy environments within telcos. So that's, that's where we come in, that's where we help our customers, that's where we learn from our customers, and I'm pleased to report that we've seen some incredibly successful activities around the world, um, particularly over the last couple of years, and it is my great pleasure to, to uh, pass the torch to Tarek, who comes to us from Rakuten, who will tell us a story uh, where all of these three elements come together, and they come to, together beautifully for incredible results that were achieved in absolute record time. So with that, I'd like Tarek to tell us about Rakuten. Thank you, Andrew, thank you. Thank you. Good morning. So ladies and gentlemen, I think I have been given a very complex task today. Actually, in fact, a bit more complex than building next generation cloud native network. Finish my presentation in five minutes. So I'll do my best today just to give you an insight about who is Rakuten, what we're all about, and most importantly, what are the key pillars of our fundamental on how we're building this network, which we call the, the network of the future, completely end-to-end -end cloud native uh, networks. Uh, for those of you that don't know about Rakuten, Rakuten as a word means optimism. Rakuten, firstly, is not a telecommunication company. And I tell this to everybody. This is actually a blessing, frankly speaking. I like the fact that we are an internet global innovation company. That means my organization have access to enormous resources, resources that understand IT terminologies and IT skills. So um, Rakuten was founded in 1997 uh, by two people, our chairman and CEO, still running the company today, very, very active. Um, Mickey, in fact, launched um, uh, the company in 97, and his, in May, the global transaction value on Marketplace was about 3,000 US dollars. I think he will tell you that 2,000 US dollars came from him personally, buying things on, on, uh, on our Marketplace. And over the time, we progressed really well. We grew to a company that understand the value of membership. And our brand identity is very critical, and the value of data becomes very critical. So Rakuten today transacts almost 139 billion US dollars through our ecosystem. It's a very, very large, powerful ecosystem. And if you look at the various uh, platforms that, that we have from services uh, such as uh, Rakuten uh, Cashback website, Ebates in the US, Rakuten Marketing, Rakuten Viber, Rakuten Kobo, I thought this is what a dream company, a dream company that has all the verticals to really disrupt connectivity. So this is actually, to my knowledge, I think this is the first time that a, a connectivity, uh, a, an internet web scale company entering connectivity to enrich the value add to our customers. Think about Japan specifically today. There's approximately maybe 128 million people in Japan that live today. Out of those 128 of them, 105 are in our membership system. What an incredible number. It's a grand opportunity for us. So, we are not a telecommunication company, but indeed we are doing something very, very different. We are building the world first end-to-end -end cloud native network. So allow me to describe to you what we mean by this end-to-end -end cloud native network. You know, before I explain this picture to you, I wanna tell you this was a choice. The choice is go the easy path, and the easy path in June of 2018 issue an RFP, and you select and you deploy network, no different than it's been deployed for the past 20 years. 
I personally believe, and I firmly believe, that nothing has changed in telecom other than changing the one to two to three to four and today 5G. The underlying foundation of telecom network, in my opinion, is still very fragmented and very fragile. We have not taken enough strides to move and advance this industry forward. So when I say this is an option, it's not an option because we are a greenfield. Well, it would have been easier, my life would have been easier if I selected a traditional way of deploying a network, but I think this is not good enough and it does not sit very well with the ecosystem and the culture of what Rakuten is all about. So this Rakuten Cloud platform that you see in front of you, the one area, the, a couple of very, very important areas that I want to bring to you. The left side of this platform is an area that nobody has dared to venture in, which is radio access. Actually, in fact, 60% of CapEx spent in telecom today is on radio access. That's where we spend all of our money in. I was told by almost everybody that I'm crazy. This radio access could never be virtualized. It's too complex. Well, please come to Japan and see this in live, in production today, running the entire cloud native access, uh, radio access on, a, on our horizontal virtual infrastructure. So we took every component in the network and we made it software. Yes, it's not easy, it's not simple. We still have a lot more work to do, but it is a journey that we started on. And on the right side, it's an area that I also think that is underestimated, the area that around digital transformation for customer experience. I will explain, today I have a workshop in the afternoon, I don't have enough time to explain to you the criticality of transformation on the digital stack. And that's something that our partnership with Netcracker is all about transforming customer experience at our retail stores. So just to give you some context, I, I'm not gonna go through each one of those items, but I wanna highlight to you, believe me, every analyst, every traditional equipment manufacturer said this will never happen, it is impossible. What I always believed we as human beings underestimate our capability once we put our minds to fix something, we will get it done. And we finished everything in eight months. We did not have a data center. We did not have any of our infrastructure. We didn't have any of our backbone done. We had nothing done. And this network is sitting live in Japan. And for those of you that know Japan, it's a quality obsessed country. We're not deploying an inferior infrastructure. This infrastructure is highly resilient, highly available and will deliver on the quality and agility that you demand and expect. So um, I, I think I'll, I discovered uh, more about the criticality also of the digital stack. I'll explain more about this, um, but also our fundamental transformation of how we deliver experiences at retail store is the partnership and journey that we're taking together with, with NetTracker on. Lastly, I wanna spend just one more minute on this slide, which is very, very important. Probably the most emotional moment, and I've been blessed in my life. I mean, I had the opportunity to build, you know, many networks in the U.S., move to India to, to participate in building Reliance Geo, and now in Japan. But probably one of the most emotional moments that I had is February 4th. February 4th, when this network came alive. We respect diversity, and diversity about culture, diversity about ideas, diversity about people. We had 27 nationalities assembled to build this network in Japan. And that's what happens when you build a world-class organization that is fixated, determined to work as one team about one mission, trying to prove to the world that it is possible, it's doable, if you want to think about the problem statement from different. It's a lot of work. So that's why I said it's an option. It's an option to either do the right thing and disrupt, and it was very important for us. And the reason we're doing this is not just to brag about we have cloud-native network. We want to pass these transformation savings to consumers. Consumers should benefit at the end of the day from what we are building. So um, all in all, I, I'll tell you, it's been for me a remarkable journey. Very, very remarkable journey. Blessed to have the right partners working with us. And uh, this is just the beginning. I, I hope that some of you that will come in my afternoon session, I'll spend a lot more time talking about the cloud native architecture. So um, this is just a glimpse of uh, what we've been really busy since uh, June of 2018, and hopefully many things that I'll be able to share with you in the coming future. So Tarek and Andrew, thank you. So, um, Andrew, um, we heard you talk about uh, the work you're doing with telcos across the world, world, world and then we heard something very different, uh, an internet company building a mobile network. How many 
what commonalities do you see between what you're doing with Rakuten and what you do with other telcos across the world? That's an interesting question. I, I think there's, there are a lot more commonalities than differences, but the differences are very, very important. Um, it's the same underlying technology. It's the same cloud-based stack. Uh, it's the same objectives, um, same KPIs. The, so essentially, you would look at it and say it's, it's, it's the same program. Um, the biggest difference is culture, and that's a critical component as, as uh, uh, we discovered in success of these transformations. Um, and the, the, the culture of Rakuten is that of an internet company. It's agile, it's, the decision making is very, very, very fast. Uh, it's perfectly aligned. They're not afraid to make mistakes. They fix them very, very quickly. There's, there, there's perfect alignment of stakeholders. Um, and um, that makes, makes a huge difference. And that's, I think that is the single biggest success factor that enabled such an incredible program to go live in eight months. Thank you, thank you. So, Tarek, um, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about, uh, I as a Japanese consumer, a Japanese mobile user, you know, I might be subscribing to one of the existing services today, Rakuten arrives in, was it September, October? October, October, yeah. October. Um, as a consumer, how will I experience Rakuten service differently from from the other services? Will you be, will there be tangible differences? And I, I think there will be remarkable differences. So let me let me share with the with the audience another insight that I had while uh, I, I relocated to Japan from uh, Mumbai in June of 2018. And uh, one of the key things I wanted to discover is simple things. Let me go to a retail store and experience the process of activation of a SIM card. And to be honest with you, I was in shock. I was really, really in shock because the, the perception of what I had about Japan, it's a, it's, a, it's a country that has amazing technology, amazing obsession around quality. But some of the processes at this retail store yielded to a SIM activation time that takes two and a half hours. And we think that's wrong. We think that we should respect human being time, and I think you should spend time with your family or whatever you like to do. No need for you to spend it on a on physical retail store. So the agility of our cloud platforms allow us to offer services. And when I talk about services, not just about network, I'm talking about the whole experience, including network, plus the digital stacks that we're in introducing. I think it you will see, A, the physical format of our stores will be a lot different. They'll be a lot more welcoming. Second is the process of uh, engaging and transaction with a customer, whether it is online or offline, is gonna be remarkably different. And my belief is we're able to do that because I, uh, you know, as Andrew talked about it, I just think the culture is right. The culture understand that when you go and approach a problem from respecting and being obsessed about customer experience, everything actually becomes a bit easy. And uh, lastly, I'll spend on one second on Andrew's comment. There is no problem with making mistakes. No issue whatsoever. Don't be fearless. That is the motto that we go. Be fearless. It's okay to make mistakes. Let's learn and be very agile about correcting the, the issue. So my belief is we will not just transform the cost structure on the network side, but fundamentally the customer experience. And I think it's gonna be a very good for the consumers in Japan. Right. And, and, I, and I think, Mark, that's an interesting point. I think we, we, we've all moved into agile development world and everybody said we are, the, the, the world of good old waterfall development is, is, is long forgotten, but the decision making is still very much fixed. So that's a next move as the decision making becomes as agile as our development. Yeah. Once that's aligned, which it is in Tarek's world, then we'll become much more successful. Yeah, great. Can, can you talk briefly about your, your cloud native approach to, to, to 5G? Yeah, I mean, um, so, so obviously in, uh, uh, we, we've been, we're very happy and delighted that also Rakuten has been recently allocated spectrum in uh, millimeter wave and band 28 gigahertz, 400 megahertz of spectrum, as well as 3.7, 100 megahertz spectrum. Um, when I talk about choices, when we look at as architects on building cloud native network, we had a choice, and the choice is make sure that this network from day zero is built for 5G. And it is public information when people look at our cost structure, but a lot of people have no idea how could this company build such a network with such a low capex investment. And it's very, very simple. We have disaggregated the entire hardware from software layer. And by the sheer of doing that, our costs have been reduced a lot. Now 5G to us, when I talk about core infrastructure readiness, 
To me, I would argue my 5G upgrade path is very trivial. It's very simple. So it's a software upgrade in the core, and for the access layer, it's, it's uh, very easy as well because we have taken into this architectural choices, whether it is for front hole, mid hole, IP backbone, all the architecture to deliver highly disruptive software 5G infrastructure, which I think will be very differentiated from what you will see being launched across many different markets. Thank you. Andrew, I'm going to give the last word to you. Uh, and uh, when we look at successful transformations around the world, we talk about the technology, we talk about customer experience. I s see a lot of transformation projects failing because of delivery. C can you just give a some brief insights in terms of how do you, how do you go about ensuring successful delivery of a transformation project? I think there's, there are elements of just successful delivery programs, such as stakeholder alignment and, and right governance and the right milestones. Uh, that goes without saying. But I think I'll go back to the, the point that Tarek brought up so many, many times. It's the culture. It's decision making. It's asking the question why. You know, not just what we're doing and how we're doing, but why we're doing this and constantly re-examining it, which is, I think is, is critical in the agile world. And I don't think we do that enough. Okay, thank you. I can't believe time's out, but uh, we could have spoken for ages. But thank you so much thank to Tarek and Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.